We are recording now, and for starters, if you don't mind giving me your name, the spelling of your name, and then the title that you'd like to see on the newscast. Sure. My name is Jesse Jokers, J-E-S-S-E, -S -S -E, Jokerst, J-O-K-E-R-S-T, and I'm an associate professor in the School of Engineering, Jacobs School of Engineering at the University of California, San Diego. Excellent. Please uh, tell us uh, about this project you're working on, uh, being able to detect COVID in a sensor of some sort. Do you want to describe it? For sure. Me? Yeah. So what the what we're basically working on is a mask that changes colors when you've been exposed to COVID-19. And so the challenge we were responding to um, was the need for surveillance. And surveillance is different from detection. So if you think about um, detection that's swabbing and, and waiting for a result to come back. It's very sensitive. What we're doing in surveillance is kind of analogous to a smoke detector, where if a smoke detector goes off, it doesn't tell you the fire is in your kitchen or the fire is in your bedroom or it's a electrical fire. It just says, hey, you need to take some action. And so that's what we're doing with this approach is trying to uh, alert people earlier um, that they may have been exposed. And what's nice about this approach is that it can be used um, daily. And so unlike testing, which um, invasive PCR testing, which has a longer turnaround time, this approach would be used daily, particularly in high risk settings, prisons, uh, care homes, shelters, where an outbreak can really quickly spread in, um, into a super spreader event. So uh, by identifying that smoke before there's the fire, we could uh, try to stem these uh, super spreader events. Is the technology there to do this? Yeah, so we actually just received the funds from the NIH this month, but we've already made some significant progress. Um, we have a, a prototype of the actual sticker that would go on the mask and do the color change. So most of the uh, Fluidics have been worked out, most of the components there. Also the little reagent that goes into a blister pack. So um, as you breathe through this device over the course of the day, um, it would accumulate biomarkers of COVID-19 and then you would release some liquids um, that co change colors if you've been exposed. And we have um, that, that reagent uh, largely formulated. And so now it's a, a matter of determining if it's sensitive enough to detect the levels of proteases that would be present from breathing on a mask over the course of the day. So that's the current uh, research roadblock we're working on. And um, um, so is your plan that these will be masks made with a device in them or these will be things that are placed onto a mask? Yeah, for ease and simplicity, these are just going to be stickers that go on top of anyone's mask. So you don't have to buy a special mask. If you if you have light one you like, this would just go on top and it would work with cloth masks, surgical masks, um, N95s. So no need to buy a new mask. What kind of feedback have you gotten so far? Just people in our newsroom have seen it said like, this is genius. Well, why, didn't, why aren't we doing this already? Yeah, I mean, the it, it, it's a tough nut to crack from a scientific perspective. Um, looking at these other biomarkers other than what is looked for in PCR. Um, and so, but we have a great team working on it right now and um, we'll, we'll continue to, to push this forward, but it, it's, it's just a matter of, uh, matter of time. Now you mentioned you just got some funding for it. Uh, give me a timeline, any expectations? Yeah, we're optimistic that um, further validation with um, positive known positive saliva samples will start um, next month and then moving on to uh, testing with our clinical collaborators at the UCSD VA um, in March. So uh, potentially a broader release um, in the second quarter. But I would like to emphasize that um, these, the, the biomarkers we're looking at have been retained from the original SARS, the MERS outbreak that happened a couple years ago, and now the current COVID-19. So it stands to reason that the next coronavirus outbreak um, would also benefit from this. And in addition, um, parts of the world where uptake of vaccines will be delayed would also benefit from this. So it, it's too soon to tell. I mean, if, if this is um, 
launched broadly by May, um, where the pandemic will be in this country. Hopefully, it's been largely resolved by then. But that's what we're optimistic for: is that late Q2 of this year will be uh, uh, in a, in a better position to distribute these broadly. Um, have you had any discussions with the CDC or, or the current, I mean, obviously a new administration, but... It, sure, it, yeah. So um, we're primarily working with the uh, NIH. The uh, NIH has a coordinating center that's combining all of these surveillance techniques. So you may have heard of uh, testing sewage that's happening at UCSD and other um, institutions. And so that's another type of surveillance approach. And so we're working closely um, with, with NIH's guide, guidance on that. Uh, how excited are you about this and how big a deal is it really? I mean, I, am, I'm in, I like images and having a color change, be able to, to identify disease, I think could really um, turn the corner in this pandemic and if giving people more information in a, in a quicker way. Great. And, and if you were just to sum up in a, in a, you know, a quick summary to our viewers, what this is and what it does, if you could do that for me. Yeah, we're, we're we've developed a, uh, actually, let me rephrase that. Okay. We, we are building a sticker that changes colors in response to exposure to COVID-19. And it has the potential to really change the trajectory of the pandemic. And it's all thought up here at UC San Diego and being developed here at UC San Diego? Yep. It's a 100% um, homegrown uh, technology. Really exciting. Anything that I'm missing that you want to fill me in on? Um, I, think, I think those are the main points. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I appreciate you being patient with me um, and great story. We're, we're going to get this out right now. I've got four visuals here. Um, and uh, is there any more video or... Media. Um, I could connect you to my one of my.